democracy often involves conflicts of interest and viewpoints of the people. These differences are expressed in an organized way through movements. People's movements have also brought a change to introduce democracy in a non-democratic country like Nepal. For a long time, Nepal had been a monarchy. In 1990, Nepal became a democracy where the king formally remained head of the state and the real power was exercised by elected representatives. However, Gyanendra, the elder brother of King Birendra, was not in favor of democratic rule. Taking advantage of the political turmoil following the death of the king, he dismissed the elected government and declared himself as the new king. The people of Nepal rose in revolt of this act, but could not make a difference at first due to lack of organization. In April 2006, Nepal witnessed a popular movement which was aimed at regaining control over the government from the king. Political parties joined hands and a new coalition was formed, the Seven Party Alliance or SPA. The SPA called for a four-day strike in Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. This protest turned into an indefinite strike in which Maoist insurgents and other organizations joined hands. People defied curfew and took to the streets. The security forces found themselves unable to control more than a lakh people who gathered every day demanding to restore democracy in the country. On 21st April 2004, Half a million protesters served a four days ultimatum to the king. The movement leaders rejected the half-hearted concessions made by the king and stuck to their demands. Eventually, Nepal formed an interim government and SPA chose Girija Prasad Koirala as the new prime minister. The restored parliament in Nepal passed laws taking away most of the powers from the king. The SPA and Maoists came to an understanding about the election of the new constituent assembly. This struggle and the people's movement came to be known as Nepal's second movement of democracy. The Nepali people have become the source of inspiration to all the democracies of the world. Another example of a popular movement was the people's struggle against the privatization of water in Bolivia. Similar to Nepal, this popular movement at Bolivia also made an impact on the democratic system of the country. The trouble in Bolivia started when the World Bank pressurized the government to give up its control of municipal water supply in favor of multinationals. The government sold the water rights for the city of Cochabamba to a multinational company who immediately increased the price of water by four times. People started to receive monthly water bills of 1,000 in a country where the average income is about 5,000 a month. This movement successfully organized a four-day general strike in the city. Mass-scale protests by the people started in the country and a new alliance of labor, human rights and community leaders was formed in January 2000. The government agreed to negotiate and the strike was called off but nothing happened. The same year, protests started again. The police resorted to brutal repression. But this time, the movement leaders persisted. The government responded by imposing martial law. However, by now the movement had become very popular and the power of the people forced the officials of the MNC to flee the city and made the government concede to all the demands of the protesters. The contract with the MNC was cancelled and supply of water was restored to the municipality 
at toll rates. This came to be known as Bolivia's water war. As we have seen through these examples, the movement in Nepal was to establish democracy, while in Bolivia it involved accountability of a democratically elected government. The similarity in these movements was that the political conflict was the cause of these struggles. Both involved mass mobilization and the critical role of political organizations. In a democratic country, the conflicts are usually resolved by existing institutions like parliament or the judiciary. Another way of influencing the decisions in a democracy is by participating in politics, creating parties, contesting elections, and forming governments. The rest of the populace can do so at a very broad level by voting. However, there are indirect ways in which people can get governments to hear their demands or points of view. They could do so by forming an organization and mobilize people with common interest as they did in Nepal and Bolivia. In both Nepal and Bolivia, we can see the various organizations that took part in the struggle were not led by any political party but by an organization of common people from different walks of life. The SPA in Nepal included major labor unions and their federation and organization of the people, such as teachers, lawyers, and human rights groups. Whereas in Bolivia, the struggle against water privatization was led by an organization called FEDACOR. Therefore, we can say that people and their struggles and movements have brought about a significant change to their countries. Pressure groups are organizations that influence government policies by putting pressure on the ruling government. However, unlike political parties, pressure groups do not aim to directly control or share political powers. Pressure groups are formed when people with common occupation interest, aspirations or opinions come together to achieve a common objective. There are two types of pressure groups, sectional interest groups and public interest groups. The sectional interest groups promote the interests of a particular section or a group of society. Trade unions, business associations, and professionals like lawyers, doctors and teachers are associated in this group. FEDACOR, a Bolivian organization, is an example of such a group. The main objective of a sectional interest group is the betterment and well-being of their members and not the people in general. On the other hand, Public interest groups are organizations that represent common interests for the betterment of people or have a common cause that needs to be defended. For example, the groups fighting against bonded labor or child labor in order to liberate them from such suffering. These groups are also known as promotional groups. A public interest group or a promotional group may also work for self-interest along with others. For example, BAMCEF, the Backward and Minority Communities Employees Federation, is an organization comprising government employees that campaign against caste discrimination. Apart from pressure groups, we also have movement groups. They can be broadly classified under two types, issue-specific movements and general movements. 
An issue-specific movement seeks to achieve a single purpose within a specified time. For example, the Narmada Bachao Andolan started with a specific issue of the people displaced by the building of the Sardar Sarovar Dam on the river Narmada. Another example is the Nepalese movement for democracy, which was formed to overthrow King Gyanendra, who dismissed a democratically elected government. A general movement seeks to achieve a broad-ranging goal in the long term. The environmental movement and the women's movement are good examples of this type of movement. When we say women's movement, it does not mean a single entity led by a single organization, but a label given to a large number of organizations with independent leadership and different views. Sometimes, there is an alliance between all these broad movements which can have an umbrella organization like the National Alliance for People's Movement or NAPM. Different groups and movements struggling for specific issues formed this organization in solidarity with their counterparts around the country. Although pressure groups and movement groups influence politics in various ways, it is the responsibility of our government to ensure the interests of all and not just a particular group or section. Pressure groups are organizations which are formed when people with common occupation interests, aims and opinions get together to achieve a common goal. The pressure groups and movements aim to force the government and agree to their demands. They employ several tactics to achieve this. For example, they carry out information campaigns, organize meetings, file petitions, and influence the media to highlight issues and mobilize public support. If these efforts don't have the desired effect, the groups can use some unconventional methods such as organizing protests, strikes, disrupting government programs, and burning effigies. Business groups often use professional lobbyists, company representatives, or sponsor expensive advertisements in order to influence. Interest groups do not get involved in party politics directly, but they aim to influence political parties. On the other hand, the movement groups take a political stance without being a party. They have political ideologies and a position on major issues. The relationship between political parties and pressure groups can take different forms. It can be either direct or indirect. Very often, pressure groups are formed or led by a leader of political parties or they act as the extended form of political parties. For example, trade unions and student organizations in India. Sometimes, these movements give birth to political parties. Take the case of students-led Assam movement against foreigners. When this movement came to an end, it led to the formation of the Ashom Gana Parishad. In most cases, the relationship between parties and interest groups or movement groups is not direct. They often take positions that are opposed to each other. However, they are also in constant dialogue and negotiation. After all, in an ideal democratic setup, the government must look after the interests of everyone and not just one section. It is unhealthy if groups promote the interests of just one section in order to exert their influence in democracy. Political parties have to face the people in elections, but the special interest groups are not answerable to people. Sometimes pressure groups with small public support are backed by individuals who are willing to spend for the cause. As a result, these groups can hijack public discussion in favor of their narrow agenda. Putting pressure on the government is not an unhealthy activity in a democracy, provided everyone gets a chance. However, in reality, it is groups of rich and powerful people who can pressurize the government. Take the example of the water wars of Bolivia. In such a scenario, the public interest groups and movements perform a useful role of countering this undue influence. If one group brings pressure on the government to make policies in its favor, 
another group counters this pressure. It persuades the government not to make policies as desired by the first group. In this way, the government is informed about the requirements of different sections of people. This leads to a rough balance of power and accommodation of conflicting issues between the groups and the government. Although pressure groups and movements influence politics in various ways, it is the responsibility of our government to ensure the interests of all and not just a particular group or section.